happening now. The Chautauqua Mall is set to reopen tomorrow. What the process will look like, plus the continued call to change Jamestown High School's mascot. We speak to the newly installed superintendent next. And the sun is shining out there today more than we had yesterday, but we've got some showers and storms coming our way tomorrow. I've got the details next. The news at noon starts now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. Officials with the Chautauqua Mall announced their plan to reopen tomorrow at 11 a.m. following the COVID-19 pandemic shutdown. Planned reopening dates for individual stores within the mall may vary, so officials are asking customers to call ahead to see what's open. The mall is also asking visitors to practice social distancing, wear face coverings, and not to gather in groups. Additionally, the mall is implementing rigorous disinfectant and cleaning practices, which include periodically disinfecting areas most susceptible to the spread of germs. Alcohol-based hand sanitizer dispensers will also be located in highly trafficked areas and public walkways within the mall. Well, members of the Jamestown Police Department lined up for a procession this morning outside of their headquarters to remember K-9 Promber, who passed away over the weekend. We spoke with Jamestown Mayor Eddie Sunquist. He at, says that K-9 Promber played a crucial role in keeping the city of Jamestown safe. We wanted to make sure that we honored the K-9. I know with COVID, things are a little different. Um, we really didn't, weren't able to do anything that's a large public event to honor the work that um, Promber did for us. Uh, so we were able to bring all of our public safety together, uh, as well as our employees, and uh, salute him one last time. K-9 Promber replaced K-9 Mitchell, who retired in 2019 after years of service to the community. Well, Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf signed two police reform bills yesterday, one requiring officers to disclose their employment history and the other requiring them to undergo regular mental health evaluations and trainings. The passage of these bills marked the first legislative action taken after George Floyd protests at the Capitol in Harrisburg. Prior to the laws, there were no standardized way for police departments to share misconduct records or disciplinary actions with other law enforcement agencies. That meant a police department hiring an officer had no way of knowing if that officer had a history of, for example, being disciplined for excessive use of force. I'd like to see a society that the people we, we place on the front lines uh, is, is a society worth protecting and defending. And that means we have to do work with our education system. Right now we fund our education system inadequately, but we also fund it unfairly. We need to make sure that, that our economy is working for everybody. Uh, the unemployment rate for people of color should not be higher than it is for whites, and yet it is. We need to make sure our health care system is accessible to everybody, that we have a level playing field when it comes to uh, access to food uh, and housing. All those things, are uh, those are lots of things we have to do. This is a first step, a very tentative and, and small first step toward many, many things that we have to do to make our society fair. Police organizations across the state have voiced their support for the reforms, including the Pennsylvania State Troopers Association. Well, parts of the Jamestown River Walk will be closed starting today due to construction. The Jamestown Parks, Recreation and Conservation Department says the path system will be closed from North Main Street to Panzarella Island. The State of New York Department of Environmental Conservation are currently making improvements to the nearby Warren, Warner Dam. Now, at the same time, city crews will be paving a path on Panzarella Island and planting new greenery, part of a river walk stabilization project. The Warner Dam Rehabilitation Project will be ongoing through next year. The river walk green infrastructure and water quality improvements there are expected to be finished by the end of August. Well, hopefully everybody is having a good day, and we thank you so much for joining us here for WNY News Now as we make our way through a, another week. Got to say hello to S Stephanie. Good to see you. Good to see uh, Stephen. Good to see Wendy, Scott, 
Amy as well. Hopefully everybody is having a good day. Let us know uh, what you're doing and what you're thinking about in the comments down below. Let's now get a check of our first defense weather forecast, and that's where we find Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. Happy Wednesday to you, Mr. Hunter. Happy Wednesday, Justin, and happy Wednesday to you almost halfway through the week, and this actually wouldn't be a bad place to be today. Presque Isle Beach, look at the lots of sunshine out there. Temperature 77 degrees. The cooler spot today is going to be right at the shoreline, so if you need to get out, get a beach trip in, Today is going to be great for that. Uh, in terms of the pollens here, ragweed is, is currently our main culprit here. That's up in the moderate category. Almost everything else is looking good. Again, the rain that we had uh, basically over the weekend helped to knock down uh, the, uh, the uh, grass pollen. So that's not a factor right now. First defense Doppler radar is dry right now, and it's going to stay that way through the day, but not for long because another chance for showers and thunderstorms will be coming our way tomorrow. Some of them could be a bit on the stronger side. We'll actually time all that out uh, uh, after actually uh, uh, we will time that out uh, during the full weather segment later on. 73 was the high yesterday. 56 uh, is where we uh, bottomed out this morning. 94 and 37 are the record highs and lows for this date. So uh, through the afternoon today, 80 to 87, lots of sunshine, moderate humidity, a lot warmer than it was yesterday, but the humidity is going to be up there. So you're going to notice it a little bit, a little bit warmer. Uh, and uh, with that south wind averaging about five to 10 miles per hour, we will time out the rain chances that come our way tomorrow in just a few minutes. Back to you, Jay. All right, Dakota, thank you. A Columbus, Pennsylvania man who led authorities to search for him recently in the Cayentone area was remanded to Warren County Prison on $5,000 bail this week. Pennsylvania State Police tell us that uh, Heidler turned himself into police without incident on Monday. Police say they were attempting to arrest him on a felony warrant stemming from a June incident where he allegedly fled in a vehicle. They add that he led him onto a pursuit here in New York before crashing into a ditch at the corner of Courtright Road and Niobe Road in the town of Harmony. He then, according to police, fled into a wooded area on foot. Now, they searched that area for a number of days, but he was unable to be located. Investigators eventually returned to his camper in PA, where they allegedly found methamphetamine products. Now, Hagler is scheduled to appear for a preliminary hearing coming up on July 21st at 11 a.m. Well, nine new cases of COVID-19 were reported in Chautauqua County yesterday, bringing the total number of cases to 188 with 43 active. The Chautauqua County Health Department says the new cases involve two people under the age of 18, two men and a woman in their 20s, a man in his 30s, a woman in her 40s, a woman in her 50s, and a man in his 60s. Additionally, officials reported 609 people are now under quarantine or isolation orders by the public health director. That number up 511 on Monday. They say the 600 plus are not confirmed to have the virus. However, they are either showing symptoms, are awaiting test results, or have risk factors. Officials say since the outbreak began, a total of 138 have recovered from COVID-19 here with seven deaths reported and more than 18,000 tests returning negative. Well, as new coronavirus cases continue to surge in some parts, recent research is putting a percentage on the number of people who have had the virus without showing signs of it. Our Mandy Gaither explains. COVID-19 is thought to spread mainly through close contact from person to person, but the CDC says some people without symptoms may be able to spread the virus. A recent report in the CDC's Emerging Infectious Diseases Journal shows as many as half of the residents infected with coronavirus in long-term care facilities in Pasadena, California, had no symptoms, and a quarter of the infected staff were also asymptomatic. The team looked at nine long-term care facilities in the city and determined asymptomatic infection rate among staff on average was one out of every four and one in two among residents. They found female nursing home residents had higher rates of asymptomatic infection than male residents and say because the potential for asymptomatic transmission is concerning, infection control efforts in long-term care facilities should include both mass testing and symptom screening. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Mandy, thank you. Now, according to the CDC, the coronavirus incubation period, which is the time from exposed to potential development of symptoms, ranges from 2 to 14 days. 
Coming up next, we speak with Jamestown Public School Superintendent about the call to change the Red Raider mascot. And later, how thunderstorms will likely impact our area come Thursday afternoon. Stay with us as WNY News Now continues. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. When you're on the go, stay in the know by downloading the WNY News Now mobile app. Stay up to date on local news, weather, and sports that matter to you. Plus, subscribe to breaking news and weather alerts from the team that puts coverage first. In addition, watch news as it happens with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network. Download the WNY News Now app right now. It's free on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. And welcome back. This week, Jamestown Public Schools issued their first public statement surrounding the call to drop Red Raiders as the school mascot. This morning, we spoke to newly appointed superintendent Dr. Kevin Whitaker about his plan to hear the community's feedback and ultimately come to a decision on what will happen to the imagery. The charge moving forward is to review the imagery that we have around the district to make a decision about um, the various imagery that we have, uh, whether or not we have removed what we said we would remove and what we will look to change in the future. And so by imagery, I mean, if you've, if you've been in the gym or if you've been in the district or around the district, there are there's a caricature of uh, a Native American. There is um, uh, feathers on the J, there is a number of cartoonish figures. There are uh, images in the gym uh, of uh, Native American on horseback, a tomahawk, things like that. So we're gonna, we're gonna start with an audit of what, our, what we have on our buildings and on our grounds, and just to make sure that we're seeing everything that we've got so that we can make a determination as to where we stand with that imagery that currently exists. Uh, then we need to make a decision about what we're going to do about it. And uh, the last group, the, the uh, last committee that looked at this, had made some decisions about the use of that, um, that Native American, that indigenous people's symbol uh, caricature. So um, moving forward from that is we need to make some decisions about the feathers and other imagery. Uh, so that's kind of phase one of the project. Phase two would be uh, working with our students and working uh, with our fans around um, any kinds of songs or chants or fan behavior that elicits a connection to uh, Native American peoples. And then phase three would be uh, discussing whether or not the nickname is appropriate, whether or not uh, we need to, um, if we want to come up with a new mascot, and uh, what direction we'd like to go in if that's the case. And in order to do that, uh, all that work, which is not the kind of thing you have done in a week or a month, um, it's the kind of thing that takes time because you have to listen to people. And the important part about listening to people is uh, making sure that you have all viewpoints represented, <clears throat> at least in some way, on that committee so that they can hear uh, what the voices of the community are saying. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for for me, and I know at the last committee meeting this was also expressed, it's incredibly important that we have feedback from our Seneca Nation neighbors. And I would like to invite uh, anyone who uh, represents Seneca Nation to get in touch with me. I've reached out a couple of times electronically uh, to try to gain some um, opportunity, whether it's for a phone interview or a conversation or an in-person talk or whatever it is so that we can get a sense of uh, where they stand because they're uh, an important voice in our community 
and they're affected by some of the imagery and connections that we have in place currently. And I know so far we've uh, seen in the in the public's uh, world here locally a, a lot of feedback from both sides, and it, and it seems like there there is points. Um, uh, whether they're for removing the logo altogether and coming up with new branding or, or folks who are arguing that there's a lot of history when it comes to this school district and that they don't want to just see this pushed off because of the moment that we're in. Have you received any feedback from people in the community and what has that been like? Sure. Um, thus far, people have been uh, pretty um, professional, appropriate, and supportive of their position. I've had phone conversations, letters, emails. Um, lots of lots of folks are reaching out from really all sides of the of that um, issue, all, all different perspectives. And I'm glad that that's what is happening because um, it represents a couple of things. One, that folks trust that we're going to have a, a committee that is, in fact, going to listen to those viewpoints. And two, that people are willing to reach out to me. And I appreciate that being someone who's new to the community and new to the school district, um, that they're willing to put their trust in me, that we're gonna move forward in a way that, that honors what their opinions are, at least in the form of um, discussing it at the committee level. So <clears throat> when folks reach out to me, they um, very few people have had a, an absolute hard line, which is either change nothing or change everything. The group is somewhere in the middle, um, and the middle is yet to be determined by that by that committee. I, you know, it's not something that I'm going to do, um, you know, top down kind of stuff. It's not something the board is just going to declare. They want to listen, and, and I want to listen to the voices of the community. So somewhere in the middle there is going to be um, uh, a decision that I believe it will be the best that we can do given the information that we have at the time. Now this week, the Washington Redskins announced they're in the works to change their name and logo. Well, now let's get a check of our full first defense weather forecast with Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. And uh, Mr. Hunter, I, I hear that uh, come later on tomorrow, we could uh, get some pretty good thunderstorms here in the area. Yes, we could. This is going to be in association with our next storm system. But hey, tonight, you might have been hearing about this if you haven't. Get out and take a look at this if you can. The Neowee's Comet is going to be visible once again tonight. So where do you have to look to see this? Basically, look about 45 minutes after sunset tonight. About, you know, about 45 minutes to about an hour is going to be the best place. Look to the northwest, and this is what you're going to be looking for. It's not going to look exactly like this. But again, you're going to be looking at something like this just about about 45 minutes after sunset and again if you really want to see what this looks like from space get on the Googler and uh, I would highly suggest you check out the NEOE's comet from the ISS from up in space that is a really cool image I highly suggest you look that up so today is gonna to be nice no weather hassle so get out and enjoy today if you can stronger storms like we've been talking about is gonna be possible tomorrow with our next storm system coming on through we warm up almost each and every day so the 80s and the muggies are gonna be returning and it's gonna be turning the hot stuff once again by the time we get into the weekend. Right now, as of noon hour, 76 degrees, lots of sunshine, a variable wind of five, and the dew point 57. So the dew point's still relatively low, but that's going to be creeping up as we go throughout the next several days. NOAA Storm Prediction Center has upgraded all of western New York and northwestern Pennsylvania to a slight risk for tomorrow. That's a level two out of five, and this is mainly going to be for tomorrow afternoon, and again, further out to the east, there's a low end marginal risk. So what are we talking about here in terms of timing? and impacts. It looks like probably around 1 o'clock is when the uh, thunderstorms are going to start to get going. They'll likely clear out of the area by about 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And again, the main threats are going to be strong damaging straight line winds and uh, some heavy rainfall and definitely some large hail uh, could be possible. Hail size could be up to quarter size that is severe size uh, when it reaches up to the size of a quarter. And then as we go beyond that, it gets hotter. Once again, look at the uh, the uh, the uh, heat index here going uh, throughout the end of the weekend or the weekend. We're likely looking at lower 90s for heat indices by the weekend. So again, get ready. Those air conditioners are going to be working once again. Nothing across western New York right now. High pressure still in control. That's going to be scooting out. That's going to allow this that you see back here to come our way. And again, look at this mess of showers and thunderstorm activity here. Look at all the lightning strikes here. And again, this is part of what's going to be coming our way 
tomorrow. This is basically our next storm system. So let's show that to you on future scan. It shows you nothing through the day. So again, get out and enjoy today. If you can clear tonight, great. If you want to get out and, uh, you know, stargaze and, um, you know, essentially try to look at the uh, comet binoculars, telescope. If you have those, those work best tomorrow. We'll see a few scattered showers in the morning. Then here comes the uh, line of showers and thunderstorms moving on through. This is by about one o'clock. And then this moves out to the east. This is by about four o'clock. And again, where you see those darker colors, that starts to indicate the heavier uh, chances for uh, thunderstorms and definitely some heavy rain could be possible within here that all clears out tomorrow night and then friday it turns much more humid and then we should be in a chance for scattered showers and storms through the weekend so zone forecast inland areas here temperatures likely lower 80s uh, here through the day it's not going to be diet summer air there's going to be at least a little bit of humidity but not bad but at least the sunshine will rule next seven days of your life are coming up right now 82 tomorrow 84 on friday and again tomorrow chance for scattered showers and storms in the afternoon some of them could be strong to severe Saturday is quite muggy, 86, and then we go back into the hot stuff as we go into the second half of the weekend into early next week with scattered afternoon, random showers and storms. Justin? All right, Dakota, thank you very much. Coming up next, hear how a local group is trying to help schools and daycares prepare for opening this fall. Stay with us as WNY News Now continues. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. Want weather now? Download the WNY News Now mobile app and stay up to date on severe weather alerts. Plus, anytime hazardous weather strikes, stick with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network that keeps you safe. You're all in a tornado warning, so now is the time to go to a safe place, small room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows. What are you waiting for? Download the WNY News Now mobile app today. It's free in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. There's an old saying, there's no news in the newsroom. Well, it's true. The time I spend at the anchor desk is just part of my day. Most of our time is spent gathering stories in the community, stories that matter to you. We can't do it alone and we need your help. When you see breaking news or have a news tip we should know about, drop us a line on Facebook today, email our news desk, or call our newsroom at 488-7226 so we can bring those stories straight back to you. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. And welcome back. Schools across New York State are working right now to outline their plans for this fall semester. And one group here in Chautauqua County is doing their part to help out. Joining us on the show is Patrick Smeraldo, who's working with the Chautauqua Connections Children Coalition to prepare daycares, schools, and other education centers um, to get ready for this fall. Uh, Patrick, it's great to have you on the broadcast. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me today, Justin. I really appreciate it. Um, it seems like uh, there's a pretty complex initiative your group is working on right now. Um, in the end, what do you hope to achieve? Well, Justin, when, when our mission is we just work with uh, established providers in the county into helping them help and get their word and their, their services out to people in the county. So um, as far as nobody really knows what's happening when we are full board open, um, we work with some tremendous agencies, as I mentioned. One is the Chautauqua, uh, through Chautauqua Opportunities, is the Child Care Council. Sue Marker and her folks are over there, and they oversee child care uh, in the county, and they're in touch with the, There are a ton of great child care centers in our county that, uh, you know, we're open, we're safe, they're following procedures. It's okay to take your kids to childcare. We want to get childcare up and you know being used again and utilized. So everybody should know first and foremost. I've had discussions with the county and I've had discussions with the child care council and some other child cares. It's open, it's safe, and it's ready to go. Um, I was privy to see some early plans from Governor Cuomo's office in June as to uh, what school may look like when it reopens. We're not even anywhere close to that. You know, you've seen the, the messages that have come out from his office. Schools now are putting their plans together. I believe we may see something around August 7th or something like that. In all of the plans I've witnessed uh, and, and actually read myself, it's mentioned PPE. 
um, to be on hand for use for staff and students if, if required. Um, so what we're doing with the PPE is we're working with different uh, folks right now on trying to collect, I've put a message out to daycares and to um, the 18 public school districts in Chautauqua County. We're trying to put together a couple of washable, reusable face masks for anybody that responds and wants to participate in the program. Um, you know, I know it's a very political topic right now in regards to face masks. This isn't a, a campaign that I'm saying, I'm just trying to assist schools. As you know, the schools have been devastated by budget cuts right now. Uh, we're just trying as a coalition to take one more layer off of them and, and help them uh, and, and to have these available. Um, yeah. So that's, yeah. that's that plan right now. And, and that's the, the, the reality of it is whether people agree with the face masks or not, if they're going to go back to school in person this fall, the governor says their kids are going to have to wear them. Teachers are going to have to wear them. And we right. talked to educators who are concerned about a policing it to get the kids to get the masks on the kids. But if you look at Jamestown Public Schools, for example, not all of those kids come from situations where parents can buy um, disposable masks every week and give their kids. So I imagine that's a big goal of your, your group is to get these reusable ones that could be handed out to the youngsters. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Justin, I teach in a middle school here in Jamestown. I have for a bunch of years now. You know, kids are kids. I have two children of my own, 15 and 11. Uh, they don't remember a pencil sometimes when coming yeah. to class. They don't, you know, they, they're forgetful. They're kids. Their minds are everywhere. I, I just, the coalition and myself, we just, I don't ever want to see anybody, number one, not be in a safe position or a situation. And uh, nobody should be, you know, here, here's a mask. Come to class. You're safe. You're fine. We're always going to care for you. Um, that's just what we're looking to do is and I and I, I the schools are we are 18 different superintendents in this uh, county right now that are have this mammoth task ahead of them yeah. um, and they have teams and put this together but if we can assist them and I've heard from some that said yeah absolutely we'll take you up on this we'll you know you can drop them off to our offices and things like that um, you know it, it's just a safety precaution to put in place and that's what we're trying to do and assist we're going to go back to normal at some time. The other, you know, the other thing I wanted to touch on, Justin, not only have there not been given any plans of how we're going to go about this, you can see when press conferences are given. And, and you know, I've talked to uh, Lori Cornell, who's Governor Cuomo's field rep down here in Chautauqua County. Even the governor, when he goes to a press conference, he wears his mask in, sits down and then takes it off. That may be a situation that we're in. But when you're in a situation where you are unable to social distance, this is the recommendation. So, yeah. I mean, the, you know, we're just following those recommendations. That's all. So, uh, Patrick, we thank you so much for joining us today. Finally, how, how can people help your group? Are you collecting face masks? Where are the supplies coming from? I, I can tell you right now that uh, Chautauqua County Executive P.J. Wendell and his team have been phenomenal. It's, it's not even a big enough word to use in helping us gather some. Um, and, and putting the word out. We also have collection bins for those homemade uh, mask makers that are out there at both United Way in Dunkirk and in Jamestown, so both Northern and Southern. Um, my email is available, patricksmerlba at gmail.com. We have a Facebook page, Chautauqua Connections Children's Coalition. Um, there's another group out there, Western New York Mask Makers. They're on Facebook too. They've done a tremendous job in helping uh, one situation we were in just last week, um, when we, we were planning to do this for September, uh, and then the governor opened summer school. So we were able to, along with the county executive's help and some folks in Western New York mask makers, we were able to get a thousand masks to BOCE for summer school. Um, and then the Western New York mask makers did 700. So that we weren't ready for summer school to open, but by just getting the word out, um, we were able to make that happen for the kids and the staff so they're safe. And there's, you know, just, we'll take any donations um, that we can get and uh, trying to help as many people as possible. We are going to reopen it sometime. I don't know the plan for that. I don't know anybody that does. So when we do, I want to be ready. That's it. Yeah, certainly. And uh, we'll, we'll put your information up on WNYNewsNow.com. So then folks, if they're out there and, uh, you know, I know a lot of people maybe still working from home, have time on their hands if they're 
crafty with making masks. I'm, I'm sure your group would love to get in touch with them. Patrick Smeralda with the Chautauqua uh, Connections Children Coalition joining us today. Sir, thank you for your time. Thank you, Justin. I really appreciate yours. Thank you so much. That's going to do it for us today. Of course, when you're on the go, stay in the know by downloading our mobile app. It's free on the Apple App Store, Google Play Store. We're back tomorrow live at noon. Hope to see you then.